Hello and welcome to lesson 18 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrett. Today we're going to be looking at 3D trigonometry. So problems that involve the skills we have learned in trigonometry. So involving things like Sokotoa, the sine rule, the cosine rule. So going from right angle triangles and to beyond um, in three dimensional problems. Okay. Remember that after you've watched the video, you should also practice this skill. So with other different questions that I point you towards until you feel fluent and until the skill feels like it's mastered. It feels like something that you will be able to use in a week later, a month later, a year later without too many difficulties. OK, as with all videos, if, if you see any errors, please comment below. Let me know. And um, if they were helpful, please comment below. OK, so let's look at this question here. So we have a wedge shape. This green object here, A, B, C, D, E, F, is a wedge. OK. And it's it's made of two right angle triangles at the ends. OK, so the cross section throughout is a right angle triangle. And its base is a rectangle, which is seven centimetres by 11 centimetres. And its height is four centimeters, and we have some sort of diagonal rectangle shape A, B, F, E, which is 11 centimeters long. And we would need to use Pythagoras to find the length um, B, F, which was the other side of that shape. The question, though, is find the angle that the line A, F makes with the base A, B, C, D. I've chosen this specific question rather than the multitude of different questions that I could have chosen in 3D trigonometry because I find that students often make a mistake when they're asked to find the angle between a line and a base or a line and um, a sort of a two dimensional shape like um, a rectangle. OK, so we're trying to find the, the angle that the line AF makes with this rectangle A, B, C, D. And people often think, well, OK, I can draw my line A, F. That's that's not a problem. But what am I finding the angle for? Because I need to find an angle between two things. I need to find I need to have an angle between two lines, not a line and a two dimensional space. OK, so the, the base A, B, C, D. Well, where do I go? Do I do I find the angle between A, F and A, B? So along here, so I find, do I find that angle? Do I find the angle between AF and AC? So along there, so that angle. Do I find the angle between AF and AD? It's, it's not clear for some people. And so I need to make sure that you understand what it's asking for when it's asking you for that, okay? Now, the key thing is firstly to draw the line you want. We've done that, AF is drawn. And then to think about looking down on the base from above. OK, so look, pretend if, if the base is the side of a shape, then we think of the side being the base and you're looking at it from directly opposite that side. OK, so here we're looking down directly opposite the base is directly opposite is from above. OK, and what we want is we want the shadow for that line AF makes with the base if we look from above. If we shine a light on the base, then the line AF will create a shadow and that shadow will be directly below it and it'll make that line AC. OK, so that line AF makes a shadow with the base, OK, if we look from above. So that is where we find our angle. OK, we draw that shadow, that line AC, and then the angle we want is that angle theta there, which is the angle F A C. OK, so that is the angle that we are asked to find. In order to find an angle, either we need three sides of a triangle if it's not right angled, or, and then, and then we use the cosine rule, or we need two sides if it's a right angled triangle. This F A C that triangle FAC is a right angle triangle because AC is along the base of this wedge and FC is directly up. It's the height of this wedge. And so the angle there will be right angle. So I just need two sides of this of this um, yellow triangle I've drawn out. So either 
you find the line AC or you find the line AF. We already have FC to help us. Okay, I'm going to find the length AC. Okay, it's the simplest one. To find AF, I would need to do three dimensional Pythagoras, which is still quite simple, but it's just an extra little bit of calculating. To find FC, sorry, to find AC, all I need is I need two lengths. Here, 11 centimeters is that length along there. And that length along there is seven centimeters. And because that is a rectangle on the base, then that is a right angle triangle there. So in effect, AC is the hypotenuse of the, of the triangle ABC. Okay, so the length AC is equal to the square root of 11 squared plus 7 squared. So it's the square root of 121 plus 49. It's the square root of 170. Okay, I'm not going to evaluate that. That is already evaluated. It is root 170. Don't try and turn that into a decimal value because it's much more accurate just leaving it as the root of 170. So now I know that length is root 170. So I'm now interested in trying to find theta. I know the adjacent side of this triangle and I know the opposite side of this triangle, AFC. If I wanted to, I could redraw that triangle AFC just to make it simple. So I'm just focusing on what I want to focus. There's theta, that's four centimeters and that's root 170. Okay, so that's the triangle ACF. Okay, so ACF, that triangle there. So I want to find theta. I have the opposite and the adjacent, so I need to use the tan ratio. So I know that tan theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So tan theta is four divided by root 170. And then on my calculator, I do theta is the inverse of tan of that value, four over root 170. And that gives me 17.1 degrees to one decimal place. And that there is my answer. That is the angle that the line AF makes with the base ABCD. Okay, so it involved a little bit of Pythagoras, a little bit of right angle trigonometry, nothing too much that's too difficult for you. The only key thing was discovering what it exactly it was that we wanted to find, which exact angle we wanted to find. Okay, so here's the question I want you to have a go at. Here is another wedge, PQRSTU. I want you to find the angle that UP makes with the base PQRS. And the lengths that are on this wedge are, it is three meters tall, okay? It is eight meters along this side, PQ, and it is five meters along the side from P to S. Okay, so three meters, five meters, and eight meters. Those are the dimensional qualities of that wedge. So using that, pause this video now and find the answer to this question. Okay, if you've done it right, what you should have done first is you should have drawn the, the line that you wanted. So UP is this line here. The angle it makes with the base is the angle it makes with the shadow of UP if you're looking from above, which is the line PR. So really you're finding the angle UPR, okay? Let's, let's call that theta. We know already that that length is three meters, that's UR. So all we need to find is the length PR or the length PU, but I'm gonna find the length PR. The length PR is Pythagoras with eight meters and five meters. So it's the square root of eight squared plus five squared which is the square root of 89, okay? 64 plus 25. Then we know that's true. So I'm gonna draw my little triangle that I, I want. It's three meters tall. It's root 89 meters along. Right angle triangle and I want theta that angle there. So I want 
to write down an expression for which I can solve. So that would be tan theta is the opposite, 3 divided by the adjacent root 89. So theta is the inverse tan of that, and that gives us 17.6 degrees to one decimal place. If you got that right, superb. So what you should do now is go away and practice that skill and practice with various different three-dimensional problems until you feel fluent with using Pythagoras and trigonometry in any type of three-dimensional problem, okay? So that it'll make your skills of using the sine rule, the cosine rule, um, Pythagoras in three dimensions, Pythagoras in, in two dimensions, uh, basic socketer, all of that will become more fluent and you'll be able to apply them in lots of different types of questions the more questions you solve. The best place to find good questions on this is in this textbook that I mention every time. And it's exercise 9.2, so the second exercise in chapter nine, okay? And there are answers in the textbook as well, okay? But if you get stuck on anything, try and find someone who you think might be able to help, okay? Maybe even comment below the question, below this uh, video if you need any help, okay? Enjoy your maths.